Hi guys. So I've just come off writing yet another grant proposal and I thought what might be good is while it's still fresh in my mind to give you some of my tips of how to write a grant proposal. So let me first say that, you know, I'm not like the most successful person ever. Of course, there are people that have got much larger grants than I have, but uh, I have written quite a lot of grants in uh, a number of different countries. I've gathered some level of experience and I have received some number of grants in the past. So this will be a little bit of an overview of the general kind of things that you really need to keep in mind when you're writing a grant. So firstly, before you even apply for the grant that you have in mind, you should really weigh up the options of whether that grant that you're applying for, you really have a realistic chance of getting. So actually, this was not my strategy at the beginning. What I just did was simply to apply to absolutely everything. And um, that's not a bad idea in terms of gaining experience because you get a feel for the kind of grants that you can get and the ones that basically are impossible. If you are a relatively junior person, then, you know, realistically speaking, you're probably not going to get these million dollar mega grants. You need to be somewhat established in the field. So while it's tempting to say, okay, I just want as much money as possible. Um, realistically, the way to do it is to start small and work your way up. So probably if you are applying perhaps for your first grant, then you probably want to apply to the smallest category of grant. And and in a way, you know, it's really dependent on what country you're in. So at some point in my career, I moved countries um, going from Japan to China. And so basically when I came to China, I really started right at the bottom again, basically because, you know, nobody knows you yet. And essentially you need to build up some experience and contacts within the country that you're applying for before you really start to go for the large grants. So that's that's the first point that you probably want to really think about what type of grants to apply for in the first place. Um, now, when you have decided to apply for a particular grant. Now, of course, the main most important thing is what's the main idea. And really, you want to think quite carefully about this, because really, this is the thing which anybody that's reading the grant proposal is looking for, you know, what's the idea, you know, they don't want to just hear a bunch of buzzwords and just a random collection of um, commonly said ideas They they want to see that this person is going to bring something new to the table that really you have to come up with yourself, obviously, because it requires some kind of novelty. But of course, when you are pitching your idea, not only should it be novel, but it should be kind of relevant to other people. So you can be doing your obscure research as much as you want. If it doesn't connect with anybody else, then of course, it's not very useful. So what you want to do is you want to definitely kind of connect this with what is happening in the rest of the field. Is this idea going to solve some say major roadblocks in the field? Does it connect with current developments? So if there's some kind of hot topics that uh, everybody's talking about in the fields, does it connect with that? So uh, you wanna show that you have some kind of competitive advantage where this is something that you can do only because you know you've got this track record you've been doing it for the last five years and you've done all these other things really what is the main idea obviously the second really very important point in my opinion is that you really want to include a kind of dream in in the proposal because um i've been on the other end of refereeing some proposals from various countries. But um, sometimes you're reading it and you are reading it and you can see this person's trying very hard, trying to impress you with all their, you know, track records and things like that. But, um, you know, you want to see that this might lead to, say, the next breakthrough. Um, so you don't want to make 
your proposal kind of too conservative. So you don't want to say, okay, I'm just going to keep on doing the same research that I've been doing. And, you know, I'm going to get another paper and, you know, sort of pitch it too low. So if, if you're on the perspective of the referee, what you want to see is that, you know, this might be the source of the next breakthrough. You know, this is kind of the way that, for example, say venture capitalists think, right? So venture capitalists go and fund, say, 10 or 100 companies, and they know that 99% of them will fail. But what they're betting on is that 1% will actually uh, blow up and become, say, the next Amazon or something like that. So research is very similar in that way, in that you want to find projects that have the possibility of being really a game changer. And if you are kind of too conservative in how you're writing it, then people are not going to be very excited by it. So it doesn't mean that, you know, you want to, you know, talk it up and hype it up a lot, but you want to say that, well, um, this is something which I really believe that it could lead on to really big things. But the flip side of that is that you don't want to go too far, uh, in that dream direction either. So if you just say, oh, you know, I'm going to build a quantum computer in the first year and then I'm going to solve world hunger and, you know, all these other things, of course, it's just not realistic, right? So you have to sort of show them that you have a balance of being able to sort of think very big, but at the same time, you are in fact, somebody that has proper credentials, you've got this solid track record, you've published these papers, um, you've actually done very successful research in the past. This is not merely a pipe dream. And this is actually something that is rather realistic. And so you don't want to be, again, shy, too shy about showing off your best publications. Certainly, cite some of your best publications that you've had because you know they're not going to go and dig up your best publications unless you both basically go and tell them if you tell them yes here is my nature here is my prl then they'll they'll go oh, okay this person has a nature and prl very good so um you know you have to sort of tell them the important and relevant pieces of information now moving along so uh, when you start writing a grant proposal. Of course, there is the abstract, but then after that, there is the introduction, right? So in the introduction, usually what I tend to do is to just say all this kind of usual things that are said in the field. And there's a reason for this. And, you know, you don't want to sort of start off by saying, you know, first line, I have a big dream and, you know, I'm going to do all these great things. Like, because, when you first start reading something, you want to first establish that you're sort of on the same page, right? If you're on the, from the first line going off about some crazy ideas, then, you know, nobody's going to follow you. So you sort of want to establish a common ground. And the way that you can do that essentially is to just talk about all the same things that everybody's talking about. So if we were talking about quantum computing, then you might say, okay, so here is where we're at in the field of quantum computing. Uh, you know, there's been this development, th this type of development, that development, and this is more or less where we stand. And this I like to call a kind of a handshake. When you go up and meet somebody for the first time, you do a handshake, and you do a handshake because essentially, of course, you know, there's nothing so hard about doing a handshake, stick your hand out, hold the other person's hand. But somehow you do handshakes. Well, you know, pre-COVID, I'm talking about, you know, nobody does handshakes anymore, I suppose. But pre-COVID, you do handshakes because, you know, if somebody does a really awkward and bad handshake, you can tell. And the introduction is something similar. Um you know, if somebody does a really awkward job of just even a rather simple thing of just telling you all the things that everybody knows already, then, you know, you're off to a very bad start, right? So the introduction is not somewhere where you want to go too crazy, too fast. Um, you, you start off relatively talking about normal things, and then you lead on to the thing that you want to talk about. Another thing is, of course, you want to 
have a very organized format to your review. And um, of course, you know, it looks nicer if you uh, organize things everything in the proposal very well. You have section headings, your font is, you know, some regular font, not some bizarre font, have some nice figures, things like this. Um, but there's also a practical reason why it should be an organized format. It's basically because your reviewer, I know this may come as a shock, is not going to really read all of your proposal word for word. So what they're going to do, these are busy people, these are professors at, you know, big universities, they're going to skim your whole proposal, right? So in order for them to skim it efficiently, it is very helpful that it is organized properly so that they can just go, okay, huh, okay, introduction, blah, blah, blah. They want to say, okay, so where's the main thing? So if they can't find what your main idea is, then of course, uh, you know, they're not going to have the patience, right? So if you have everything organized very well, then it helps the reviewer to read through it very quickly, find the points that they want to extract from your proposal and come to their conclusions. And also, yes, another important point is that it depends on the country a bit, but having an organized format uh, is sometimes uh, important because in certain countries, the way that they grade the proposal is that they look for certain components of the proposal. So they say, uh, you know, in, in the, is the introduction written well? So, of course, if the introduction or the methods or, you know, whatever other parts of the proposal are not clearly distinguished, then, you know, they can't even grade the proposal very efficiently. If you have very clear structure and structure that is according to the stipulations of the grant uh, application, then, you know, it helps for them to grade it. Okay, so that's all I'm going to talk about today. Now, if you want a more detailed breakdown, then then please let me know in the comments, then we might do a follow up. But for today, um, I hope you enjoy that. And if you like this, then please make sure to subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.